Hello, check, check. Ah, so nice. This thing works. Hello, everybody. How are you today? You're looking good. Oh, nice. Cameras are on and everything, many different cameras. So nice to be with you, Janae and Kelly. Uh, I'm Hannah. So nice to meet all of you. We're talking about fighting bias and building wealth in the work that you do every single day. So I feel like uh, we've got a lot to cram into just 20 minutes. Yes. Pay attention, everybody. Uh, <laughs> welcome, everyone. Um, I'd like to start with some storytelling, like we, you know, to learn about who you are, what you do. Um, so can we hear maybe from you, Janae, first uh, with Airbnb? There was a hashtag uh, that started trending, Airbnb while black. Yes. Tell us what you were doing when you saw that and, and what you did after you saw it. Sure. Well, 2016. Uh, the hashtag Airbnb while black started trending on social media. I was not with the company at the time, but I was uh, working, I was being uh, courted, I guess you'll say, uh, to come and work with the company. Um, and my background is primarily in advocacy and activism. Uh, so when I saw the hashtag, obviously I was concerned um, and I wanted to know what the company was doing about it, especially as I was being recruited and what I found was that the company was really taking this and tackling it head on. Mm -hmm. Since 2016, we have done a number of things on the platform through platform changes, product changes, policy changes that really address discrimination. Um, and I think in so many ways, it was part of the reason why I ultimately joined Airbnb mm -hmm. because of that commitment, the, the long-term commitment. Um, we've, we've done things like create a community commitment, which essentially is an attestation that every user who, I, I, I kind of want to take a poll in this room and see mm. how many Airbnb users do we have? I love that, <laughs> oh my God. So I don't know how many of you remember, but when you joined, you probably encountered a little pop-up blocker that said, I commit to treating all Airbnb users, regardless of race, religion, a whole list of protected categories, um, fairness and without bias and judgment. And if you clicked yes, which I'm guessing all of you in this room did, which is great, you get to use the platform. If you click no, you are removed from using Airbnb. And to date, we've had 2.5 million people removed from our, our community who will <laughs> not attest to that. So that was a big step. We also created a tool called Project Lighthouse that we launched in 2020. And Project Lighthouse allows us to understand the ways in which our platform might be causing disparities. In 2016, we heard about these horrible stories of people who were being discriminated against. And that work led us to creating the community commitment and so many other tools. But Project Lighthouse allows us to really look at the platform and understand ways in which people of different perceived racial backgrounds are experiencing the platform platform and we're able to create solutions to address it. So that's the story and mm -hmm. it's not the end. There's so much more work to do. Um, I think a big part of where we are right now is continuing to look at the solutions from what we've learned from uh, the initial findings of Project Lighthouse that were released last year in December of 2022 um, and seeing how those solutions are addressing uh, the, the problem of discrimination on our platform. Again, we know discrimination exists in the world and it can happen on a platform like Airbnb, but we are committed to fighting discrimination and creating an equitable platform. Mm -hmm. Well, I love hearing about, you know, when you describe that pop-up and you describe really kicking off millions of users that represent, um, well, a potential effect on your bottom line, but that's not the way you want to do business. And, and you have to create and design the kind of platform that yeah. you want to live with and work for. And uh, I, I love hearing that. And then I also hear that you're talking about a Twitter hashtag. So it's people's stories people's that stories. really, yeah, spurred a project where then it became about data. It became about up. data. Data yeah. is so critical to uh, being able to address a problem. We have a, a saying at Airbnb, which is you can't fix what you don't measure. And yeah. for us, Project Lighthouse is the tool that allows us to measure the disparities that exist between our users. Um, and so without that data, we would just be throwing 
you know, spaghetti at a wall and hoping mm. to see what sticks. This allows us to be really targeted to address the things that we know are differences in the experiences of, of our users. Okay, so everybody, if, if you're here with your organization and uh, your colleague, Google Project Lighthouse, and then take that to yeah. your boss and say, look what Airbnb did. Or you can too. go to airbnb.com slash against discrimination, and there you will find a lot of our information that we have about Project Lighthouse and a lot of the other tools and policies that we've created to address discrimination on our platform. I love that. Um, Kelly, can you tell us about your CEO of the Black Innovation Alliance, and it's about closing the racial wealth gap. Yeah. And so when you're supporting black entrepreneurs in tech, you know, tell us what are the, the key drivers of your work? What are you trying to accomplish? Sure. Hey, y'all. Such a good-looking room. Um, I am Kelly Burton, CEO of Black Innovation Alliance. We are a national coalition of organizations that support black business owners, tech founders, and creative technologists. We actually have a delegation of our members here. BIA crew, can you just raise your hand? <laughs> Shout out. Um, our members uh, are the front line of support for black entrepreneurs and innovators across the United States. There are 116 organizations part of BIA and they support about 400,000 entrepreneurs and innovators of color in about three dozen cities across the United States. BIA is three years old and in a very short period of time we've done a whole lot. We see our work as being about creating the sort of ecosystem that is necessary for black innovators and entrepreneurs to thrive. For us that falls into four pillars. The first is research which is so important. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had a solid sense of the lay of the land before we did anything. So we've launched several research projects. One we call Blade, Black Liberation and the Digital Economy. And it focuses on digital entrepreneurship. We're doing it in partnership with Walmart. Um, and this was, uh, it was insightful for us because we thought a good amount of research had already been done on digital entrepreneurship. But what we found is that there was very little. Mm -hmm. So not only was our work cutting edge for communities of color, but it was cutting edge for the uh, broader industry. Research advocacy. Um, we helped to launch the very first Congressional Caucus on Black Innovation with our Congressional co-chairs, one of whom I met at Web Summit a year and a half ago, Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett. We pitched her on the caucus. She loved the idea, returned to Washington, D.C., and six months later, we were launching with black innovators and entrepreneurs across the country the Congressional Caucus on Black Innovation. Two weeks ago, we launched a new partnership with the White House. Um, you may know, but the uh, Biden administration passed the largest domestic budget in the history of the United States and so our goal is to ensure that the, our fair share of resources are going to black and brown communities across the country so we're partnering with the White House to make sure that that information gets out third capacity building it's really important for us to help to build the skills and capabilities of our leaders and their organizations so we partner with UBS they've invested three million over three years to ensure that our members our leaders are receiving the development support that's necessary to carry this work forward and narrative change um, we were able to create history with web summit last year we did the first very first activation focused on black entrepreneurs in the history of web summit so for us, it's really about how can we activate that systems level change that allows us to have exponential impact in communities of color. We know that when it comes to closing the racial wealth, cap, uh, wealth gap, entrepreneurship is the number one wealth creator in the world. Everything else is secondary. So if we have any chance of closing this 228 year racial wealth gap, that means it's gonna take black families 228 years to catch up to white wealth. And if we have any chance of doing that, we've got to really lean into entrepreneurship. So that's Black Innovation Alliance. You're busy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're busy. That's in three years. This is our birthday. So we were able oh. to celebrate our birthday. Happy last birthday. Week. Uh, with our members in Miami, Florida, uh, with UBS and Target Foundation. So that was really exciting. Amazing. Definitely, uh, we are in need of systems change, so it's yes. really important work that you're doing. Um, and speaking of, in terms of the Airbnb uh, organization, I wanted to ask you about something you'd mentioned um, previously to me about your civil rights audit. So I had never heard of that before. Has anybody here heard of a civil rights audit? Okay. Cool. Yes, That's I like amazing. to see that. Can you explain to us what that process was? Yeah, so it, going back to the hashtag Airbnb while black and coming out of that, we really knew that we needed someone external to help us analyze our platform, analyze how we 
got to this place of, of discrimination happening. Um, and so we hired a woman, her name's Laura Murphy, she's a civil rights uh, expert and leader, and she came in and did a, a 360 audit of Airbnb, uh, talking to our hosts, our guests, talking to our employees, our senior executives. Um, and our senior executives, and I think this is really important, and I know there, there are a lot of founders here, they were really bought in to this idea of doing the audit from the start. And I think that that is an, an important thing that I want to convey to this audience because you need that leadership in order to make the change, the systemic change that needs to happen. Um, and so for us, it was getting that buy-in. But Laura Murphy came in and she did this whole 360 uh, analysis. And at the end of it, what she found was documented in an audit. Again, if you go to airbnb.com slash against discrimination, you can access um, that initial audit report. And it talked about things that we needed to do as a company to address greater equity and, and increase greater equity. So the community commitment is, is an example of one of the policy changes that we had that came out of that initial audit. Um, we also made a whole host of, of additional changes. We created a, an open doors policy, a 24-hour helpline that basically allows people who are on trip and, and even after a trip or before a trip, if you feel like you've di experienced discrimination, you can immediately get rebooking assistance. Um, we will investigate to make sure there wasn't or was, if there was uh, an issue, uh, we can remove and take action on the, the host or the person who was the offending party. But it gives us a lot of power to uh, essentially take action against discrimination. Hmm. Um, and we're sort of outside of the audit process, but I think a lot of the work that we have been doing since the initial audit, like creating Project Lighthouse, is because we had that initial audit, because we were able to examine and see what the, the issues really were. It allowed us to lean in, as Kelly just said, and really address um, the change that we kn knew that we needed to make. Mm -hmm. And it's an ongoing sort of situation. There's not an end date. Uh, to, to this work. Mm -hmm. Because we know discrimination continues to persist, we imagine that there will be in other instances. But by creating this sort of suite of solutions and policies that underpin our efforts to combat discrimination, we are able to take action if and when that does happen. So it's not to say that you'll never see another headline or, or hashtag. We hope that you won't. But if that happens, we now have the tools in our toolbox to take action and, and prevent it. Mm -hmm. And so what year, sorry, did you do that civil rights audit? We started the civil rights audit in 2016. Mm -hmm. I love that it led to real changes and, new, you know, your rebooking assistance. As yes. you say, it makes all the difference for somebody who's experiencing discrimination to have the help and support and not need to over explain and not be doubted. Absolutely. It's like you get help. Yeah, yeah. You, get, you get help. I should also mention one of our other changes that, that came out of, uh, of, of that work was delaying profile photos. Um, and so a, a lot of people may not know this, but it used to be that when you were trying to book, a host would see your fo profile photo and make a decision about whether or not you could stay. Mm -hmm. And we sort of went to a practice of delaying the photo until after the, accept, the, the host accepts. So if I'm the host and you're requesting to book with me, I won't see your photo. How you look, how you show up in this world won't be a factor consciously or subconsciously into how I'm going to say whether or not you can stay with me. So that was a, a big change that I think also is important because, you know, we want to make sure that people feel comfortable booking and don't have to think about whether or not their perception, their perception or someone's perception of them based on how they show up in the world is going to impact their ability to get a successful booking or not. So mm -hmm. that was another thing that we did. There's a whole lot more that I could talk about. I could mm -hmm. really, we really do need more time. We, but <laughs> we could use double the time for next time. time. Yeah, I, there, sure. I encourage people to go to the website and yeah. see uh, all of the changes that we've made. Mm -hmm. Well, it is really nice to hear about improvements that are made based on data, you know, yes. and it's inspiring because we want to go from talk to real action and real results. Um, in your work, you know, working with racialized communities and black entrepreneurs, have there been any surprises in terms of 
your journey, you know, your learning journey and, and, and your work journey. I don't know who wants to tackle that first, Kelly. <laughs> I'll jump in really quick and say there's just so much to learn and understand when it comes to communities of color and, and entrepreneurs of color, specifically black entrepreneurs. I'll tell you a really quick takeaway from the study that we did on the larger ecosystem. We learned that when we, when we assessed where the venture funding was going, most venture capital goes to three places, Silicon Valley, Boston, and New York in that order. But when we geocoded um, black founders who received north of a million dollars, we found that of those three, black founders in New York received more venture investment. Um, well, Silicon Valley was number one, but Boston and New York were flipped. And so Boston was number two. I'm sorry, New York was one, number two and Boston was number three. And black founders in New York were receiving 10x the venture investment as black, than black founders in Boston. Mm. So that caused us to wonder, well, what's going on when Boston is receiving more money in uh, venture funding, um, but New York is doing a better job of funding black founders? So we often have these artificial metrics, like one million, like who's receiving north of one million. That doesn't tell us a whole lot, but we need to better understand when we see black founders receiving funding, what are the conditions that enable that to happen? And that's what we still need to better understand. Like, how do we create inclusive economies, inclusive ecosystems that really enable black entrepreneurs and innovators to win? It's a journey. You get the data and the information, but you still need to understand what it means and keep digging. 100%. You need those insights. Yeah. And then you need the action items on the back of the insights. A lot of times we do the research and nothing comes out of it. Or we don't really unpack the meaning of the research and we don't act on it. And so at BIA, we're really trying to build the muscle to not only do the research and the insights, but also to activate in light of what we are continually, continuing to learn. Um, we're out of time, but I want to leave with just one thing from each of you. You know, if there's one thing that you want to see an organization do today, something that is an actionable thing, what is the recommendation that you have? I would say um, lean into partnering with external entities who are experts in, in the work that you're trying to do. In addition to working with Laura Murphy, we worked with a whole host of civil rights and human rights, privacy rights organizations to develop our tools and, and solutions. And we could not have done this work without them. Um, they bring a, a certain level of expertise that even when we have internal people who have that, that background, there's a, a credibility that comes along with these experts. So lean into that, um, get that buy-in from the top, and intention, uh, make your intentions institutionalized at the early stages. Amazing, that was three. Yeah. Kelly. I'll say really quickly, there's a lot of conversation around supporting black entrepreneurs, but not enough conversation around supporting the people who support black entrepreneurs. Mm. And those are our members who have given over this stage of their career to be in solidarity in, in support of black entrepreneurship, which if anything is capable of closing the racial wealth gap, it is black entrepreneurship. So lean into support for innovator and entrepreneur support organizations, because if we've got a chance, it's going to be on the back of these leaders. Thank you so much. Kelly Burton of Black Innovation Alliance and Janae Ingram of Airbnb. Thank you. Mm -hmm.